lady. Hey, Alex. Great to meet up with you here on Mozart Snapshots. Thanks. It's great to see you too, as always. Where are we going today? Today we are going to go to the place where the entire story of Mozart first began. Where's that? The house that he was born in, right in front of us on Getreide Gasse number nine. Mozart's Geburtshaus. Yes, but in those days it was actually called the Hagenauer House on the fish market. Why was that? Because it was owned by a man named Johann Lorenz von Hagenauer, who was a spice merchant and became a very good friend and financial supporter of the Mozarts, and it opened up onto a fish market. Usually he is called Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And here it is written Wolfgang Amadee Mozart. Did you know that his real name was actually Johannes Chrysostomus Wolfgangus Theophilus Mozart? And so where did Amadeus or Amadee come from? That's actually the Latin translation of Theophilus, which means loved by God. And in Mozart's time, it was actually quite typical to translate names into other languages. But so did Mozart actually go by Amadeus? Almost never. There's actually only one reference in May of 1787 in which he is called Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And on his wedding certificate to Constanze, he goes by Wolfgang Amade Mozart. But otherwise, Amadeus was really only used as a joke. So when did Mozart's family move to this house? Well, Leopold Mozart and Anna Maria Pertel Mozart moved into here shortly after their marriage in 1747. And what part of the house did they live in? They lived in the five rooms up here on the third floor. The very first room that belonged to them is this one right here. And this was, as you can see, the kitchen. Oh, interesting. And the reason that this room was actually separate from the other parts of the apartment is because in those days there was a law that the kitchen could not be in the same part of the house as the rest of the rooms because of fire danger. As you can imagine, all of the cooking was actually done on an open fire here. So first of all, it would have been filthy in here. And secondly, of course, because it was an open fire, you know, it would have had quite a danger for fire. So, and now we can go into the actual living quarters of the apartment, beginning right in front of us here with this room which would have been used as a storeroom. When exactly was Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart born? He was born on the 27th of January, 1756 at 8 p.m. in this very room, which was believed to have been the family bedroom. Did the whole family sleep in this room? They did. All four of them slept in here, and that's actually the reason why some years later they decided to move across the river, because it became impossible to have all four people sleeping in the same bedroom. He had only one sibling, Nano. Well, no. Actually, he was the last of seven children, but unfortunately the other five all died in infancy. And when Wolfgang was born, his father called him a gift from God because he was so small and weak, they didn't think that he would survive. But he did survive. Yes, and luckily he grew into a fairly healthy toddler, albeit small and thin, but that was probably due in part to the fact that he was fed barley water and oat gruel rather than milk. Why was that? Well, in those days, it was quite common among the middle classes to feed their children on barley water. And in keeping with this tradition, Leopold did not want his wife to nurse their children. And it could be that even had she wanted to, Anna Maria may not have been able to nurse Wolfgang because she nearly died giving birth to him because the placenta remained in her womb and they had to do a very risky surgery in order to remove it. Interesting. So was he already showing signs of genius as a baby? No, I mean, he was a normal kid like every other child. And, you know, by his father's own admission, he was more more interested in his own career and in promoting his violin tutor than to worrying about whether his newborn son was going to be the world's next musical genius. I guess that all changed one day. It did, and the very day that that changed, according to notes that he left in Nano's notebook, 
was on the 24th of January, 1761, three days before Wolfgang's fifth birthday. What happened on that day? On that day, he sat down at the keyboard and shocked the whole family by playing a piece that his sister had been practicing for weeks or months. And he played it nearly perfect, and between 9.30 and 10 p.m. that evening, he not only perfected it, but had it memorized. What was that piece? It was a little scherzo by the Viennese court composer Georg Christoph Wagenseil. And uh, is this the room where Wolfi and Nadal would have practiced? Yes, this is believed to have been the family's living room. And so consequently, the clavichord would have been in here. But so little Wolfi learned completely on his own. No one had been teaching him. Well, I mean, you know, being a little brother, he was hanging around his sister quite a lot and probably was picking up a lot of things by just watching Nanel because she said that he would sit down at the keyboard and play the sound of thirds because apparently that certain harmony appealed to him. And then, of course, having little brother hanging around all the time while she was practicing, she was probably teaching him without her parents noticing or realizing it. Well, in any case, it had to have been amazing for the family. Yes, and I think particularly for Leopold, because being an experienced teacher, he knew talent when he saw it. And for him, his little son was an absolute miracle. And I guess that Mozart just kept progressing at incredible speed. Yes, and because in the next couple of weeks, he had actually mastered nearly everything that his sister had learned in the couple years that Leopold had been teaching her. It must have been a bit difficult for Nanal to see that. I mean, any sibling would be a bit intimidated or jealous when her kid brother pulls off something 10 times faster and better. You know, it could be, but at the same time, by all accounts, Nanal and Wolfgang were extremely close. And, you know, he just adored his sister and she adored him. So, who knows? And, uh... When did little Wolfi start composing? Again, according to notes left by Leopold in Nanel's notebook, um, Wolfgang played his first composition on the 11th of December, 1761. What was it? It was actually a little andante in C major, and it sounded rather similar to the compositions in the Nanel notebook, except it was full of some originality. The pieces from the Nanal Notenbuch were by Leopold Mozart anyway, weren't they? Many of them, yes, but not all of them, because there were also works by composers like Wagenseil and C.P.E. Bach and others. Mm -hmm. Hence that little scherzo by Wagenseil that Mozart shocked everyone with. That's right, and coincidentally, on the next year, when Wolfgang played for Empress Maria Theresa, it was a piano concerto by Wagenseil that he performed. And we believe that Wagenseil was not only in the audience that day, but he also turned pages for little Wolfgang. <laughs> ah, interesting. But so what was Leopold's method for teaching such a child genius? Well, you know, from the very beginning, it was clear that Wolfgang had a phenomenal ability to imitate everything he heard. And so consequently, Leopold would show Wolfgang basic principles and allow Wolfgang to familiarize himself with chord patterns. And so in many ways, you know, Wolfgang learned by trial and error because later on, Little by little, Leopold would show him how to improvise, and this was, it was more or less quite a natural way of just coming to music. He taught him by example rather than rule. That's right, because he would correct um, the pieces that, that Wolfgang wrote, but leave in all the little individual quirks. <laughs> And uh, was that common for that time? No, it was not common at all, because in those days, teaching style was very strict with a lot of tears and a lot of whipping. And so Leopold was really extremely revolutionary in this way. 
Well, Katie, it's an amazing feeling to walk through the same house that the child modes at once did. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. Dann bis zum nächsten Mal, Papa. Bis dann.